So, update number six. This uh, episode, I'm going to be putting the engine in. But just before I do that, there's a couple of little bits to button up before I can. Starting with the dipstick that I was talking about last episode. Just got a hose on there. Uh, just one of those sort of generic Z hoses that you can get. So it doesn't kink. I also, uh, like I said in the other episode, I wish I kind of pointed that outlet a little bit more upwards because it does slightly hit on the uh, engine arm there, but I've got uh, some electrical insulation or protector on it, so that should be fine. Eventually when I go ITBs, I won't need any of that or it'll be in a different place anyway. So one of the other things I need to button up is the throttle cable. So this is from a 525 M50 motor. Uh, obviously 5 series, so this is the one the internet told me to get. I actually thought it was going to be longer than the throttle cable I already had from the M40. Uh, but that hasn't actually been the case, it's pretty much exactly the same length. But in speaking to people that have done the swap before, sort of measuring it myself, I've come to the conclusion that the length is actually fine. So the main difference is, obviously being a new cable it's a bit nicer, hopefully move a bit easier. But on the engine side of things. The right hand side's the M40, the left hand side is the M50, and you can see there that the M40 sort of end is a lot narrower than the M50, so you could probably use the standard 318 cable, um, you just need to put a different end on it. So the time's finally come, making these three all into one. So we've got RHD Engineering M20 conversion flywheel. I've got uh, bolts or flywheel or flex plate bolts from an auto, which are the right length for that application. New M20 clutch, a G240, an M52, and all the ass other assorted bits and pieces. So time to get cracking.
So the engine's finally in. It didn't actually take that long to, to put in from underneath, but obviously you've got to have the right type of equipment like a hoist and we had like a, a jack that went in between the four posts, uh, the four post hoist on either side. So we used that and a few other bits of equipment. So I think if you're probably doing this in your garage, like this type of garage, I'd go and still put the engine through the top. But uh, for us, putting the engine up from the bottom actually worked really well. So uh, yeah, car's back home, pretty pleased. There is a couple of things I've noticed. Throttle cable here isn't sitting all that happily. I'm hoping to be able to poke that back down and sit it on top of the bell housing. Hopefully that'll be a bit nicer. And uh, also that drain there, a bit hard to see, is a bit stuck between the back of the head and the uh, brake and clutch lines. So I'm gonna have to figure that one out, but shouldn't be too difficult. Come around the other side. The uh, engine arm actually hit the charcoal canister at the bottom. We had to move the charcoal canister up. So, and because it because it has these outlets, it's going to have to be about the same height as the master cylinder. So, hopefully, I can put them on a slightly different angle. Those outlets, um, rather than going straight back towards the firewall, maybe on a forty-five degree angle or something. But uh, yeah, that charcoal canister is going to have to sit a bit higher than it uh, it normally would. And probably the the largest most annoying issue because I actually tried to fix it was these pipes here so it's become clear that the top one even though I've angled it is still well I've probably made my life worse because I've angled it more towards the uh, the plenum so I'm not sure how I'm going to fit a hose in there at the moment hoping I'll still be able to but uh, you know you can't get through life uh, being too smooth sailing there's always going to be a few issues to solve otherwise pretty happy and uh, yeah I think that just about wraps up this episode next um well I made a start on putting the dash back in so I guess I can cover a bit of that and then get an exhaust in about a week and a half full stainless system so that should be not too far away and then all the auxiliaries just uh, yeah coolant and oil and radiator and a few other bits and pieces and hopefully it'll be good to go in a month or so. We'll see anyway.